I'm JD, the Media Jack, and welcome to my podcast, the Media Jack Podcast. Yes, no more flip side, although the episodes are still available online through YouTube or wherever you download audio podcasts. As well, this will be in the exact same place. I just decided brand new year, I might as well just rename it to the Media Jack Podcast. If you want to support everything that I do, go to Patreon. Just search for the Media Jack. You could be just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer yet again for this month who gets a shout out every episode for being the top tier Patreon supporter. If you would like to support me, it just starts off at $2 a month. That's all it takes for you to support me and to show me you enjoy everything I do here. Now, with that being said, let's get on to today's episode. This is Hannah Gray, someone who literally started off in a diner and then moved her way into the adult film industry. I'll let her tell the story it's happening right now on the media jack podcast i'm from columbus ohio and right now for a living i work in the adult film industry i model i'm a content creator and i'm a dancer as well now you work now in the adult industry but it wasn't like this has whole been kind of a sudden thing over the past couple of years i mean you were kind of dipping your toes in just before the pandemic hit and then suddenly uh, a lot of things happened like how did this all come to be before the pandemic happened i was just dancing i hadn't yet started my only fans i hadn't done any kind of content creation or any kind of film work yet i was just a dancer and then of course everything shut down with the pandemic so at that point um i was trying to figure out what my game plan was what I was going to do next. And that's when everyone started talking about OnlyFans and a lot of my friends were getting on there and telling me I should do it as well. So I made my account and I just started throwing different pictures and I was making some solo content here and there. So yeah, I was just dipping my toes in the water, trying to see how it was going to go. Uh, it was still a new thing at the time, so I didn't know what to expect. But then that's when I got on Twitter, because I had never even used Twitter before, but everyone seemed to be using it to advertise their OnlyFans accounts. So I got on there. I started following some girls that were in the industry because I wanted to see what they were doing on their platform so I could learn from them. And um, I found out a lot of these girls were doing like professional adult film and working with different companies and studios. So I started following those accounts too. And yeah, that's when I just started making connections and networking with everybody. And there was a producer that was in my city. He was just a small amateur producer who was just starting his mini vids channel. And he wanted me to come do a shoot with him. And since he was in my home city, I was like, okay, that sounds kind of cool. Like I had never done anything like that on, on camera for somebody else before. And of course, he was going to pay me for it. And it was the pandemic. Everything was closed. So I was like, okay, it sounds fine. I'll go do this. And and he actually had some pretty good connections in the industry. And he started telling me who I should be following. Um, I told him I had never been out to L.A. before. And, and I had always kind of dreamed of going out to California and, and visiting. And he started talking about, oh, if you want to go out there, you should follow so-and-so and talk to this person. And eventually i got enough shoots on my own that i could go out there and and visit and do a couple of shoots um it wasn't anything mainstream yet at that point uh it was just some small amateur studios but after that i got with my first agency and i did some mainstream work and then everything since then has just taken off quite the whirlwind starting off with uh, <laughs> I know. just dancing <laughs> and then moving on from there i mean you you were smart about it you you went out there and you started making connections and uh, going into social media you know, basically uh, blind, but, you know, smart enough to know that, you know, if I follow and learn and try to make connections with these people who have already made it this far, then maybe I can learn from them. Right. Exactly. What got you started in dancing? 
first of all, because for some people, like just just the idea of going into a strip club and and performing pole dancing or just flat out stripping is already a major step but you were already there before i danced i was working at a small little coffee shop in my city i had just moved out of my parents house so i was living on my own and i was struggling a lot financially like to pay rent and i couldn't even afford a, f a cell phone because i couldn't i didn't have the <laughs> the money to pay a phone bill so i was like using my laptop to facebook message people and <laughs> like that was my way of communicating right um i had to take a bus to get everywhere because i can't get a car so i just had this really shitty job and there's this girl that worked there and she became she her and i became friends and one day she just tells me that she started working at this strip club and she's showing me pictures of her in her heels and her lingerie. And she's got this like really pretty blonde wig on. And I had never like, yeah, I'd never been to a club. I didn't have any friends that were dancers. I didn't know anything about it. I don't even think I'd ever seen like photo, like she's showing me photos of her all dressed up. And I was just like, whoa, that's so, like, that's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts telling me like oh you should come with me we can both quit working here and um you can work whenever you want you can drink you can work day or night uh, and you have complete pretty much complete freedom of your schedule and you wouldn't have to struggle anymore and I would just tell her like no I'm not gonna do that and <laughs> like it just sounded really bizarre at the time and I was just worried about like my family finding out or my like some of my friends and stuff and I like that was a huge concern um and I just kept blowing her off and then one day I got into a fight with my manager which is just like another long story but I quit on the spot and then I realized what I had done like I was just like oh my god like I just quit my job why did I do that and <laughs> I thought about I thought about maybe just going back there and trying to talk to him and be like hey I'm sorry can I have my job back but instead of doing that I texted my friend and I was like hey I I told her what happened I said I quit I don't know what to do now. I'm kind of freaked out. And she's like, well, now's your chance. Like you can come <laughs> try this out with me and see what you think. And I sat on it for a few days and then I was like, all right, I'll go. I'll just check it out at first. I'll look around and make sure like I feel comfortable there and maybe meet some of the other girls that were there and get to know them. And so I went and actually had a really good time. Everyone was super cool. The atmosphere was really dope. And the managers, they were really cool. And it's like, I saw this guy was drawing a bunch of this girl on the stage. I was like, whoa, like that. <laughs> like, that girl's having cash thrown at her. Like, that's so crazy. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just kind of fell in love with the whole thing after seeing it and um, I actually started working the next day I went out and got like a pair of heels and um, some laundry and I went and uh, worked the night shift and um, I I thought I was going to be a lot more nervous than I actually actually was like I I didn't really feel scared or I think it's because I have my friend with me too that really helped she like introduced me to some of her friends and everyone was just making me feel really comfortable mm. so but I had a good time and I just kept doing it at that point um, there's no going back <laughs> <laughs> after that um <laughs> it, just, it was just a really good first night and I I just started to feel a lot more confident about it and um, I just kept going and the anxiety that I was having before just went away and mm. I just kept working and just got really into it. So, yeah. 
That, that, that first night that you went up onto yeah. the stage, <laughs> did you uh, did you pick your own song? Do you remember what that first song was? Um, I don't remember what the first song was. They just we didn't get to pick our music. Oh. We got to pick like genres. Okay. So there was like a computer that we would like. We would like pick the genre of music, and then it would already have a pre-selected playlist. Okay. So. Um, but it was, it was actually, I know it was like a rock song. Um, I just don't, I don't remember what it, I know I picked rock as the category, but no, I don't remember what the song was. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I remembered, but I just know it was some cool rock jam. Fair so, enough. okay. Fair enough. Like I, I, I for, for, for me, if I ever, uh, got enough, uh, got enough courage to uh, attempt anything like that like that song would be my instant ringtone for everything just so that I could have that one memory. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward from there, you, you've now, uh, worked with a couple of studios and whatnot. Was it, did you still find that, uh, there was that nervousness or did you kind of find your own rhythm as you went forward? There was definitely a lot of anxiety right off the bat. I, I I wanted to perform well for the main, like the bigger studios, because of course I wanted them to tell other companies about me and want to work with me again. So I I did feel some pressure to like perform well and um, impress the other people I was working with. Everyone ended up being really cool on, on those sets and eventually I, I did start to find my own rhythm and ease into it more and but even still I still get some anxiety just being in front of the camera because there's a certain expectation that people want you to live up to like to you're performing for an audience. So mm -hmm. you want to like, especially if there's a script involved, you want to carry the lines. Well, you want to know who, you, what character you're playing and, and just make sure that you execute everything really well. So it's, it's different than dancing because you kind of have more freedom with dancing. You can be creative with your movement. Sometimes with your music, you can dance the way you want to dance and, um, there's just more expression involved in that. And then porn, you're doing what the director wants you to do when you're on a set. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely different in that aspect. What was the communication like, like that between yourself and the crew of your, your first, what would you consider a, a, a full blown professional shoot? It was about, I want to say like, two or three months when after I first got started that I did my first like mainstream production mm -hmm. and um, it went really well actually I had some really good co-stars that I was working with um, it was a uh, uh, can I name names yes uh, okay. yeah, feel okay. free <laughs> no that's totally so fine was, I, uh, I had I was working with Maddie Collins and Robbie Echo and those they're both very bubbly very outgoing super down to earth and friendly so the communication with those two was was really good and then the directors themselves i didn't have any issues with they they knew i was new and that i wasn't like a, a pro or anything so there wasn't too much pressure to um get a hunt like do a hundred percent every time like if i messed up on a line or i had to go back and do something over they they didn't get a angry or upset or like they were really chill so mm. everything went smoothly and i'm very thankful for that it kept it kept me going i feel like if things hadn't gone well it probably would have scared me off and i might have <laughs> i might have gotten cold feet or something so yeah do you have much of an acting or performance background? Um, not really. No. Oh. No. When I was in middle and high school, I was in a couple plays, not with any leading roles, but that's as far as my acting experience goes. Don't I I don't have any kind of camming background. So like being on camera for 
the first time was a little bit nerve wracking. I'm not someone who came from cam or was used to being on camera before other than just like filming myself for OnlyFans. So, mm. but no, no prior acting or experience. No, you just, I wish. You, you, <laughs> just, you just, you just developed a natural ability, the ability to be a performer, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm still working on it. I'm, I think I can still improve in a lot of ways, but I've definitely gotten a lot better than mm -hmm. when I first started out. Your your profile and uh, the description that was sent to me was you you most like to portray the 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 girl next door, the the innocent redhead girl next door. Is that like just kind of an amplification of who you feel you are, or is this a character you try to take on? No, it's something I feel like I can relate to a lot. You know, like growing up, I was like the shy kid. I was really reserved and quiet. I I had some friends, but I wasn't super outgoing. And going through high school, like I didn't get a lot of attention from boys or like I was I was always so shy and kept to myself a lot. So that's why I feel comfortable being in like that girl next door role because that's someone I feel like I can relate to just from how I grew up and those experiences I had. So, and I'm, I'm definitely a lot, I, I'm, I'd still say I'm somewhat introverted, but I still feel that shy persona still comes about sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mentioned you mentioned briefly earlier uh, when you were starting to become more and more involved into the adult industry you had these concerns of like w my family's is my family gonna find out are my friends gonna find out so like is this something you've had to approach now yes yeah so my family knows now they're aware of what I do I did not tell them somebody else told oh, them oh that's which, the worst which, I know I know at first I was really mad about it but then I was like you know what they kind of did me a favor because I was already so anxious about them not knowing anyway that when that person told them I was like all right well now I didn't have to tell them and the cat's out of the bag so now I just have to deal with some tough conversations but first just trying to get them to like understand it and um they're pretty old school about some certain things so they had some assumptions that i kind of had to tell them wasn't true and just try to get them to understand my side of things and they're still not super happy about it but they don't really give me a hard time anymore they're a little more accepting of it now that I've kind of sat down and explained it to them. Um, but yeah, I'm glad they know now and I don't have to have that anxiety anymore about it. And then most of my friends know, I do have some like friends in my home city that are a little more conservative. So I haven't told them about it, but um, for the most part, everyone in my close knit circle is aware of what I'm doing and accepts it. So, mm. or is learning, trying to accept it. Yeah. No. In well, the I've, process of accepting it. <laughs> on, honestly, at the end of the day, you are an adult and you're making your own decisions with your life, your career and how you move forward in this world. Right. So it should right. ultimately always come down to what is best for you by you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, w with that, like, where do you hope to take this adult career in the in the near future and in the distant future? That's a really hard question, honestly. Um, well, near future, I do have some plans. Like, I took a really long break from my own content, like hmm. OnlyFans and my mini vid site. So I've been getting back on that lately. I've got some um, some ideas for some new scenes that I want to film. And then um, this year or last year, 2021, I went to my first Exotica convention 
and I, I've been wanting to try and create some merchandise. I made a couple t-shirts. They were okay, but um, I have some new things that I want, new products that I want to start working on. Mm. Uh, and eventually I'd like to make a YouTube channel too. So long-term, I don't know. Like I, I didn't know that I was going to get to where I am right now. It's kind of hard to like, I don't know. It's just things are so unpredictable sometimes that it's just kind of hard to really say what I want to happen, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much I know I'd like to be in this industry a bit longer. It's not something I'm going to quit doing like tomorrow or next month, but um, it's definitely not something I'd like to do forever either. I do have other plans that I'd like to pursue. I'm, I'm in school, so I'm trying to like also focus on that and get my degree. And so there's other things that other plans that I have, but for right now, I'm, I like being in the industry. I have other projects that I'm working on. So that's all I can really say on that right now. Can we, can we touch on those other projects? Because uh, like, it's always important to have other things on the go, other irons in the fire and also other interests. As you can see, like in my background, I have a giant stupid collection of video games. <laughs> uh, so it's, I'm not, I'm not just talking to adult film stars all the time, but I have other interests. You are outdoorsy. Uh, you also are going to school right now, I believe for uh, social work or something of that. Yeah. Yeah. Social work. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you're a murder mystery unsolved crimes buff <laughs> yeah that's true too i love those like um uh documentaries about like the like famous serial killers like i've seen like the ted bundy ones mm -hmm. and the zodiac killer and i don't know i i've always had an interest in like human psychology and understanding why people do crazy things like kill hundreds of people so just trying to like <laughs> I don't know. It, it's it. Some people think it's creepy, but I think it's interesting. So, <laughs> some sometimes I have friends over and they want to watch like a movie or like cartoons or something, and I'm over here and want to watch like this serial killer documentary. So, <laughs> but, I, I'm um, I'm I'm not knocking it. I mean, like getting into the psychology of of people who are just uh, a step outside of the norm is is interesting yeah. and like a lot of a lot of documentaries and and podcasts and the like of uh, these unsolved crimes and whatnot i mean they, they they go into grand detail and there's times in these shows or episodes where you're like what <laughs> it just it's already off the rails and then it takes you somewhere else too so no, i'm i'm with you 100 percent there yeah yeah, so, and then, yeah, like you said, I'm outdoors, I enjoy, like, hiking and um, cycling, yoga, um, I, I go to them, I like to work out, and, uh, take a Zumba class and a yoga class during the week, and, well, it's kind of cold in Ohio right now, so I haven't been outside as much, so that's where I normally stay inside and watch documentaries and stuff like that so netflix hulu <laughs> <laughs> yeah nothing wrong with that gotta hibernate <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what what is it that you you're going to school for social work is this is this yeah. a, a strong interest of yours as well moving forward yeah yeah it is to be honest i'm not quite sure what i want to do with it yet um I was thinking about this summer there they have some volunteer openings at the um ch local children's services office so i was thinking about maybe doing something like that this summer hmm. um i'm still trying to decide if i want to work with adults or children there's a lot of like gray areas that i'm still unsure of but I'm exploring options. I'm trying to get my foot in some doors. So, and I took a long break from school. So getting back into it now, I hope that'll give me some ideas of what direction I want to take things in. But yeah, yeah it's, it's something I'm feeling optimistic about. Are you a football fan? 
Uh, I'm an Ohio State fan. <laughs> as far as other teams go, um, not really. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're not. You're not all excited and whatnot for the Bengals making it into the uh, the semifinals. I don't really pay much attention to sports in general, so. Um, but I am a Columbus native, so of course, like everyone here is crazy about Ohio State. So if they're playing, I'll watch. Right. But other than that, I don't have much of an interest. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's fair. Totally fine. So you mentioned earlier you wanted to possibly start up a YouTube channel. What would you put out mm-hmm. onto YouTube? I don't know, just like vlogging, like like if I go to conventions, like exotic or. I, I travel quite a bit, so when I travel, if I see something cool or go somewhere different, like on a, on a hike or something, like I don't mm-hmm. know, I think it'd be kind of cool to vlog some of that stuff. Some people have suggested to me that I do something like that, or just so people can kind of get to know me outside of the industry, because right. I, you know, that my social media is, it's me, but it's me in the adult industry which is not who i am all the time right so i think it'd be it'd be cool to let people see what some of my other hobbies are and other things that i'm doing so right what just for the fun what 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 does a a typical day of hannah what does it entail from like waking up in the morning to uh, possibly doing a, a midnight stretch before a bed? Like what do you do on a day to day basis? Um, well, when I'm at home, I, I don't know. It just kind of depends on the day. Usually I, um, if I have some schoolwork, I do online school. So I'll, in the morning, I'll start with that. Like I'll check my course calendar. I'll make sure I get all my, assignments done and I'll go to the gym I work out like three to four times a week sometimes more maybe Mm. or I take like um classes at the gym too so if I have a class like I'll go do that and then it just depends sometimes I'll stay at home all day and I'll do pretty much nothing like I'll just watch tv I'll um I'll clean like I'll (laughs) I'll uh, just listen to music and chill. I'll uh, I'll just be really lazy and just like stay at home, watch YouTube, um, <laughs> stuff like that. Or <laughs> if I want to see some of my friends, like I'll hang out with my friends. We'll just we'll just chill. I don't I don't we I used to go like like to go out and go to bars and drink a lot and party and stuff like that. I don't really do that much anymore. I'm mm. I'm more of a homebody these days so Hmm. but today i'm i'm just running some errands i've got this like dentist appointment i'm kind of anxious about i haven't been to the dentist in a while so um i hope i don't have any cavities but (laughs) just (laughs) um (laughs) not not you're not just portraying the girl next door you are the girl next door Like, there's nothing boring about your life. You're just living your life from day to day. Nothing exciting. There's no fireworks yeah. or anything like that. You're just... No. I I travel and work a lot. So when I'm at home, I like to just chill. Yep. <laughs> so, hy- hypothetical question for you. If you could uh, look back and like talk to your younger self two, three years from now and still know that you're going to make this journey to the point where you are in your life and your career what advice would you give your younger self from like three maybe four years ago um i would tell myself that i shouldn't compare myself to other people and i need to just focus on myself and my own goals um because everyone's got their own path and um sometimes it's easy to like look at somebody else's achievements and what they've accomplished and get discouraged because maybe I haven't shot for that company yet or haven't worked with that person yet, but that doesn't mean that I can't or I won't. It just hasn't been my time yet. So, um, so yeah, I, I would tell myself, don't, don't compare yourself to other people. Just focus on you 
um, trust your instincts, um, do what you think is best for you. Don't try to follow what somebody else is doing because it could be the wrong thing at the wrong time. Mm. Um, honestly, that's, that's the biggest thing I would tell myself. And then also, um, don't, like, don't feel pressure from anybody to do something you don't want to do. Like, if you're not comfortable with it, like, just say no, don't, like, you don't have to impress anybody by trying to do something like you don't, you're not into. So just stick, stick to your guns and, and trust your judgment. Pretty much, pretty much the advice you took for yourself when you told your manager, manager to pump sand all those years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think back at that moment? Do you think back at, you know, what you said or that des- decision you made that day? Yeah, sometimes. I'm glad I didn't go back mm. and ask for my job back because he might have given it back to me and then I could still be stuck there. And then if I was still stuck there, I probably wouldn't have reached out to my friend and gone to the club and danced and all that right. so I'm glad I quit and um, <laughs> and uh, um, and look where I'm you are now friends, friends with that person we're like Facebook friends and sometimes we'll like say hi to each other every once in a while so it wasn't like it ended on a bad note um, or that we had like a huge fight or anything I just said like I'm I'm quitting. I'm done. And I just left. So yeah, everything worked out and, um, I got where I am today. So (laughs) a question that I commonly get whenever I talk to adult film stars is what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to a, a male trying to enter into the industry? What would you, what advice would you give a guy who wants to break in to this industry? I would say get a girlfriend or meet a girl who wants to also be in the industry because if you if you're if you're a single guy it could be harder but if you have a girlfriend or you're working with a girl who also wants to be in the industry cuz like at the end of the day like girls have female performers have bigger tend to have bigger audiences and get more attention. Like they tend to be like the center of attention and porn, uh, always the case, but just the standard. Right. Um, so if you have, if you have a girl that you can also work with, that will help you out a lot. Cause if she starts getting a following, her fans are also going to see you and that will help your platforms as well. Um, but if you can't get a girlfriend or you don't know any girls who also want to pursue the industry um i would just say just focus on your content like make an only fans make make different get different platforms many vids um sex panther fansly there's so many new ones now there's like just for fans pocket fans like not that you have to get on all of them but try to utilize utilize as much as you can because there's different traffic on different sites right so start building your content um get some nice cameras some lights like try to make your stuff look good and then just start advertising it like get on twitter tweet like at some time yeah some guys will message me and they'll ask me like how do i get started in the industry but they don't have any like content on their pages they don't have any links they don't have um they don't have any indicators that they're even trying so um step through one like you gotta try like you gotta put stuff out there and start um advertising it so god awesome that's the best answer i've heard so far <laughs> All right. Well, I I, I gotta let you go. Yeah. I know you have an appointment to go to. So before you go, uh, where can people find you on social media, or okay. find you on the internet in general? I should say. So I'm the most active on Twitter. So uh, my Twitter n- username is Red Hannah, spelled with an H at the end, H A N N A H. Because not everyone gets that. Um, Redhead Hannah ninety eight mm-hmm. on Twitter. 
uh, Instagram, I'm Hannah Grace 98 with an underscore at the end. And then I'm on OnlyFans as Hannah Grace 98 and on many vids as Hannah, Hannah Grace vids. Okay. Like V I D S. I think that's all of them. I'm on Sex Panther too. I don't remember my, my name on there, but if you just put Hannah Grace, then it, it should pop up. I don't get a lot of requests on there. so. Gotcha. Hannah, but, Hannah with an H at the end. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I, H-A-N-A-H. <laughs> All right. I'll let you go. Thanks so much for <laughs> joining me. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you.